is made strong. He never promised that the cross would not get heavy and the hills not be hard to climb. Oh, he never offered well, victories without fighting, but he said hell would always come in time. Oh, just remember when you're standing in the valley of decision and at the adversary said, give it that hold on. Our Lord will show us if they he will take you through the fire again. Oh, I know but in myself that I was so hardly perished. Oh, but if I trust the mighty hand of God to seal the flames again. That the cross would not get heavy And the hills would not be hard to climb Oh, he never offered A will of peaches without body But he said hills would always come in time Oh, just remember when you stand it in the valley of the season, and the adversary said, give it just hold on. Our Lord will show us, yes, that he will take you to the fire again. So just hold on. Yes, then he will take you to the fire again. Lord, take you to the fire again. Amen. He will carry you through the fire. You believe that tonight? Amen. I, I tell you, God is so awesome. We have just, God is blessed in so many ways this Amen. weekend. And uh, I can't say enough to the church for their love and their hospitality. But, you know, there's been a, a celebration done that started at 715 this morning. Celebrating a sweet saint that lived across the road. And I know there's a lot of the family that's here. And... I'm sure if she could tell you one thing, hold on, it's worth it all. If she would tell you, stay true to the Lord. What He says He will do. Heaven is worth it all. And I wish you were here. So we want to sing this song dedicated to the sweet Saint Miss Taylor. And her family wish you were here. i 
And somehow if I know that you could, that you'd let me know. That you're new in life, and it doesn't hurt anymore. Things couldn't be better. Heaven is worth waiting for. That you miss me too until then. You'll be praying for me. And I know if you could talk to me now. Oh, here's what you'd say to me. Wish you were here. It's such a beautiful thing. Wish you were here. Nothing but clear, sunny. He's the only stronghold that there is. Everything else will pass away. But Jesus will stand firm.
by faith alone. Sight alone. And yet his eyes were watching me. The Lord, 
share something with you. In Luke, the 23rd chapter, I'm going to read these scriptures to you. Beginning in verse 33, it said, And when they come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. The criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with him sneered, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers mocked him, coming and offering sour wine, and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. Verse 35, it says, And the people stood looking on, the rulers and the soldiers. My friend, we were in that crowd. Some of us were the people. Some of us could have been the rulers. Some of us could have even been the soldiers. On one side criminal on the other side a criminal but he cries out and says father forgive them they don't know what they're doing would you have cried out father forgive them no we'd have been crying I don't deserve this They've got the wrong man. It was Joe. It wasn't me. But he cried, Father, forgive them. And we were that crowd that stood under him, mocking him. You saved others. Save yourself. That was me and you. And there he's hung between heaven and earth. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. Tonight I want to ask you. I want to get as real as I can get with you. Miss Taylor knew where she would spend eternity. She had no doubt. She opened up her eyes in glory at 7.15 a.m. this morning. Change of address. Where will you spend eternity? There's only two choices. Heaven or hell. Not no in the middle. It's heaven or or hell. And it's not, well, I think I'll go to heaven. No, if you think you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. The Bible says that you can know that you know that you know Jesus Christ. 
Can I tell you, my friend, if you're doubting where your walk is or where you will spend eternity, I have good news for you tonight. You can know. Because it's wrote in this Word right here. So I'm going to ask you to search. Search down into the depths of your heart. Into those dark places where no one wants to look. Monday night we heard an evangelist speak and he gave an analogy. What does the Bible call our body? The temple of God. And he said here was this beautiful temple. And he said as you entered in, it was gorgeous. He went down the first floor and he said it was marble everywhere. Everything looked good. As he continued on down to the next level, he said beautiful quarters. Everything looked wonderful. Clean. And they kept going down. Kept going down. And finally ended up in this room that the door was shut. He said he knocked. But no one came to the door. Finally he opened the door up. And as he entered in, he said, there was filth everywhere. He said, could not be seen what was in there. It was so dark. And so dark and cold. And he just had left out of this gorgeous room that was light. Felt warm and comfortable. And then he entered into this room that was dark, smelly, yuck. And he said as he looked around, he began to see things that had been hidden away. What happens when you take some food and you put it in a dark corner and shut the door on it? It begins to stink and to smell. That's sin, my friend. This body is the temple of God. And you may think you're hiding something from God, but God will open that door and He'll look in there and He'll see that sin. Because when the light of the Father enters that room, it reveals all the garbage that's in our life. My friend, what garbage are you hiding from God? You're not hiding it. He knows it's there. Why not let the light of the world, His name is Jesus, enter in and clean it up. Wipe it clean. The Bible says that He'll make you as white as snow. Do you know Him? Do you know Him beyond a doubt? My friend, eternity is too long to be wrong about salvation. Do you know Him? Do you know Him as Lord? I want you to stand. I'd like for some of the group to come down here. Brother Tim, I'd like for you to come. If you need to come to this altar and pray, you come on right now. There'll be folks to meet you here to pray with you. And I want you to bow your heads, every head bowed and every eye closed. No one's going to be moving around. If you need to come to the altar, you come on, but do not leave at this point in time. We're dealing with eternity business right now. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, I want to ask you a personal question. 
If you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? Think about it for just a moment. Now, if you're here and you've, you've answered, I, I think I'll go to heaven, or I just really don't know. I thought I was saved many years ago. But you'd like to know more about how you can know tonight for sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Would you raise your hand up real high? Would you raise your hand real high that you want to know more about Jesus and how to be saved tonight? I don't care how long your name's been on a church row. A church row will not save you, my friend. Only Jesus Christ can. Anyone here tonight? We're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. Praise God. I want to ask you this question. Maybe you once had a close walk with Him. And He seems like He's a mile away from you right now. That you're just not sure where you, your walk is with Him. But you want to draw back close to Him again. Would you slip your hand up so we can pray for you tonight? That you want a closer walk with the Lord. Amen. I see those hands over there. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. Thank you. Hands all over the house tonight. Amen. Now I want to ask you to do this. If you raised your hand up, I want you to make your way to this altar. Take a hold of one of these folks' hands and ask them to pray for you. You don't need to tell them what's going on. They'll just be honored to pray for you. Would you do that right now? Just make your way down here. You come on right now. Friends, I want to speak to you tonight as a pastor. The rest of them will tell you the same thing. I deal with a lot of people at the altar. And I want you to put aside a denomination tonight. And I just want you to think about Jesus Christ. Dave has just told us that a lot of people don't know for sure if they're saved. And I deal with a lot of people to the altar that will look me right in the eye and say, Brother Tim, how in the world can you know that you preach? You know that you know that you know when you take your last breath that you're going to be with the Lord. How can you know that you can have heaven as your home? Nobody can know that. I've had that said so many times. Well, I want to give you something that the Bible says. It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I got something here I want to read to you, and I don't want you to, I can quote it, but I want you to know I'm reading straight from Scripture tonight how you can know that you're saved. There's no guesswork in it. God took that out on the cross with His Son. In First John, you look it up and you get home if you don't believe me. In First John 5 and 13, he says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. The Bible says that you may know yeah. that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. You see, it's an everyday process. Paul says, strive to be perfect. It's an everyday work. Let me tell you something tonight. I don't know where you attend church. We have a lot of our folks here. They can tell you right up front. You can know tonight. And if you're not being told that you can know for sure that you're saved, and if you don't know for sure tonight by what God has done in my life as a living testimony, if you don't know tonight, if you have doubt, pretty well tell you you don't have it. What's more important than eternity tonight? You tell me one thing that's more important than all eternity tonight. It's not your job. It's not your family. It's not your friends. It's your place tonight and the decision you've made in your life to spend with Jesus Christ. 
you can know tonight. You can know. And if you don't believe that, then this Bible's a lie and I'm on my way to hell. It's not a lie. Amen. Satan's giving you a lie straight out of hell. You can know tonight. You want to worship like a Christian's supposed to worship tomorrow morning in your church? Come to the altar tonight and know that you can know. Give it to the Lord. Amen. It's all that matters. Would you come tonight? I'm begging you with everything I have, would you come? If people tonight could change their mind, they would give everything in their life to have the opportunity that you got tonight. You see, the rich man didn't pray for himself when he went to hell. He said he lifted up his eyes. He seen Lazarus far off his bosom. You notice he didn't pray for himself because he knew it was too late. He prayed, Father, send Lazarus back to witness to my brothers. He prayed for someone else. Don't you think about the person standing beside you? Don't you think about anybody else's life you're justifying yours by? It's about you tonight. You can know. Will you please come? You can know. If I added up every single weakness, every time I let somebody down, if I gathered all my thoughts and my failures, I can step them up to lift it from the ground with all my regrets carry hold for me sitting in the shadow I could see oh yes that's how much right here not through me not through these other pastors but what God's done through us we can show you how you can have eternal life right here tonight it's, it doesn't cost a dime you don't have to put it on layaway it's right here oh don't you want it it's not going to cost you nothing right here right here There are oceans full of all hard and bad decisions. Rivers overflowing with our doubts. But there are canyons that still echo with their longing and questions. We just can't figure out But we tried so hard to say And yeah, we fall But our need is so great Yeah, we're so small Oh, yeah That's how much I need to say Oh, and what a say. 
church doing a little add-on. We was building the altar area around the, the front. It was just me and one other man, one of the men from the church, and we sat there and began to work, and he said, Brother Wade, would you do me a favor? Can you just describe to me what heaven is going to be like? I don't know, somehow I just sensed that he just needed some time and the words, so we put our hammers down. We put all our tools down and sit right down there on the altar. And I opened up the Bible. Began to describe the gates of pearl. Walls of jasper. Streets of gold. River of life flowing through the middle. Then the Bible says, I have not seen nor entered into the heart of the mind of man what the Father hath in store. And we worshiped the Lord right there that night. Didn't get any work done, but we worshiped God. 6.30 the next morning, I got a phone call. Brother Junior had got up, started to walk in to shave like he did his normal time. Evidently, he had a blood clot or something, went straight to his cart, fell over dead by the end. I was devastated. I sat down there in my living room, began to pray for his wife. Brother Mike, this is what I thought I thought. Brother Junior, I wish I could say, can you tell me? Can you tell me what you've seen? I've only heard, but you've walked the street. I don't care how old you are. I don't care what you've come from or where you've been. Every one of us needs to be held just like a child. And the Bible says that we can call him Abba Father. We can call him my father, my dad. We can climb right up in his lap right there and hold on to him. I can tell you tonight, I don't want to live a day. I don't want to live an hour. I don't want to live a minute. I don't want to live one second without the joy of Jesus Christ living in my heart. That's how much I need to sing. Would you sing that last verse you just sang there, Brother John? Would you bring? Jesus is here. Bad decisions, rivers overflowing with our doubts. There can you still echo with our Let me ask you 
tonight. Maybe you're dealing with a sickness in your body. Maybe you're, you may be battling cancer or whatever it is. Folks, I've seen God handle cancer. I've seen him it. Maybe you're dealing with heart disease or whatever it is. I'm telling you, we serve a healing God tonight. If you need prayer for that tonight, right now is the time to get it. Whatever the need is, it's here tonight. If you need a touch from God, right now we're so ready to that's how much I need a Savior. Oh, Lord, if you're over the Lord right now, God, thank you, God. The that brings me to my knees. Oh, yeah. That's how much I need a Savior. Oh, and what a Savior. Jesus is.
Christians, you realize tonight that the Bible says that the angels were created by God. They have lived their whole existence in His presence. Yet God is so awesome that continually around about the throne, you can hear, Holy! 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 And tonight, we don't want someone else crying out that praise tonight. But we want to cry out, Holy! Holy is the Lamb! Sing it again, brother. Sing that chorus. Sing it with us. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth and the earth and the earth and the earth. It was all created and I think great to the King of Kings. You are my everything and I will I want you to do me a favor. I want you to say this with me. Glory! Glory! You know that means the undeniable manifested presence of the Almighty God. They said the Shekinah glory would come down as a cloud and rest upon that place. Brother Tim, I've seen that happen in my lifetime. We was having a revival, and one of our young men had to work late. And he came to the revival late that night and said as he drove up there, he saw a cloud sitting on top of that church. When he walked in, he walked into this kind of presence. Church, you don't get this everywhere. You don't get this all the time. And we need to enjoy what we have here. Amen? Why don't you stand with me? Sing that again. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Rest in his and his No music. We praise. We've had a good time. Now let's just give it to God through song. Lord, let's just praise Him right now. Yeah. With the talents and abilities He's given us. Yeah. Lead us, guys. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. What it is and is to come. Praise God. Yeah. 
adore you. what's happened to you tonight or today, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you've made it all possible by letting God use you. Tonight we have a wonderful blessing, a uh, prayer from many months has been answered, and uh, Kathy lives right down the road here, and she's come just to express her joy through the rededication of her life. Hey, we think rededication sometimes is not important. But let me tell you something. You can stray a long ways when you're away from the Lord. Yeah. And He only knows how far that can be. Tonight, she's come to re she's came and rededicated her life. She's poured her heart out to the Lord. Amen. She wants a closer relationship, wants to live for Him. Yeah. She wants to get involved. She wants to be a worker. What else can you ask for? Hey, hey. amen. 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 She is a hard worker, very energetic. And that's the kind of people we need in God's army. Yeah. Amen. 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 Kathy, you got anything you'd like to say? We talk about the preacher preaching too long. You know, we have to set sometimes and just get warmed up. I believe sometimes service just not, I don't believe we set long enough to get our mind centered on what really needs to be done, you know. And that's what's happened tonight, and it's happened all day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Harmony. Praise God Almighty tonight. Well, amen. Yes, sir, Brother Jared. I, um, I'm tore up. <laughs> I sit over there and cried my contacts out. You know, I'm not. I'm not trying to add on nothing you've said. I'm. I'm not trying to 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 be nothing and do anything, say anything. Lord knows, if I say something, I might get in trouble. But we've been given praise. God loves our praise. And he loves it when His children get together and do what we're doing. And you want to know the power of God. And you want to question. And you want to surround yourself with doubt and negativity and all the things that this world says that it's not true. I sat back and watched this little girl yeah. Communicate to her Creator. And for us that have vocabulary, we don't exercise that enough to our Father. We have become so still and complacent. We have worried about ourselves and what we think it ought to be. You see, God created us with a language. And He created us with means of communication, not just so we could talk about each other, cause problems, stir ruckuses, hurt each other. Come on. Not so we could edify each other, build us up. He gave us a language so we could talk to Him. Yeah. His children need to humble themselves and start talking to their father. If a little girl that probably does not say much can get up here and give praises to God through her way, through her means, how much more of us are we in the wrong for not doing it? God dealt with me over there. I don't know if you go to this church or not. But we talked about prayer. I think that's been the theme for this weekend, David, is prayer.
I encourage you to find your prayer rooms. To find the place where you can get alone with just you and God. And you communicate to Him in any way that you can. And you stay there. If we would talk to God as much as we talk to each other about our problems, we'd notice that this would all start fading from you and we'd start seeing some differences in our churches, in our families, in our communities, and in our state. Oh, God, tonight I just pray. God, forgive us. God, forgive us for taking something that we have so precious for granted. Lord, may we humble ourselves. And may we call on the name above all names, Jesus Christ tonight. And Lord, open the dialogue. Some of us have not done it so long that we've maybe forgot about how to do it. But Father, it's just as simple as I am talking to you right now. Pouring out our hearts. God, restore us. Restore your people. Hear us, God. Work with us. Build us up to what you want us to do, Father. But above all, let us call on your name and talk to our Father. Lord, we give you the praise. Creation I see. Praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The sin is near to come. With all creation I see praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all sit down just a second. We're going to have a draw in here. I feel like Mr. Haney. Okay, it's a CD from 1188. It is to James and Mary Gorman. Amen. Praise the Lord. CD from In Him Trio right here to Leona Eubanks. You need some help there, brother? Come here, help me. Brother. A CD from the Crusaders Ministries to Wilma McNaughton. McNaughton, there we go, right back there. A CD from the Hackett's to Mike Young. Right back there. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, a book called um, Mercy Mercy Drops. Mercy, it's Mike Love Day. Mercy Drops around us. You wrote that book? I'm impressed. <laughs> Wait a minute, just a minute. Book. I'm sorry. To Nancy Nichols. Over there. Praise the Lord. Oh, I don't know if I haven't down yet. <laughs> to uh, another, this is another book here. By uh, Coach Bill Street. And it's called uh, Those Who Trust in the Lord. And it goes to Ivan and Angel Lawrence. Yes. <laughs> That's my NQC buddies right there. I have a T-shirt here. It says, if any man will serve me, passport to... Eleven eighty eight shirt. Cool. To the promised land. Um, Sherman Adair. Sharon. Wait a minute, just a minute. Now done. <laughs> well, I smeared them all up a little while ago, and so uh, uh, what it, I'm going to tell you from from our group, all the groups that are here. Again, I want I want to tell the church how much we appreciate uh, the good food, the fellowship, and the hospitality. And I'll be honest with you, those are great things. But to feel the presence of God coming here like this. Uh, somebody prayed before we got here. Thank you very much, church. Well, I wanted to share this with you, church. Don't ever get mad at your preacher when he gives an hour invitation anymore because you've just been in one. <laughs> if it only seemed like about ten minutes to me, God is still so good and, um, you know, uh, it never ceases to amaze me what God does. It's not because we're here, but it's because He showed up. And He'll show up if we invite Him. And uh, uh, Alex handed me this, and I'm going to walk over here and get my glasses, Brother Wade, so I don't embarrass myself. That's it. <laughs> We had a. I tried to move on, but that's him. We had a total of 76 households watching this all across the United States and Canada. So there were 76 homes, households that watched. Um, like I said, uh, we never know what that's going out to do. <coughs> yeah. And in two weeks, November the 7th and the 8th, I'm sorry, October, I'm rushing it already. I'm trying to get to Christmas. Y'all going to buy me a Christmas present? Uh, diesel will work, okay? Uh, <clears throat> October the 7th and the 8th, Springfield Community Church in Springfield, Missouri will be hosting the DSQC up there. If you got friends or family up there, tell them to come out. Uh, and if you want to come, we'd love for you to come. Uh, then October the 28th and 29th, we'll be in Sperry, Oklahoma at First Baptist Church. Oh, close to your home. 
I know. Uh, we'll be there with those great folks doing DSQC. And then on November the 4th and the 5th, it's only about a little less than two hours to Magnolia from here. And I'm going to challenge the churches, get you a van load and come out. Come to Magnolia. We're going to be celebrating our 10th anniversary of DSQC. Uh, we're going to have a lots of folks there. It'll be a Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a, and a Saturday night service. And um, it'd be at the Pentecostal Church of Magnolia, right on Highway 79, right across from Walmart, so you can't miss it. Um, but we would love for you to come and to be a part of that. You can go to dsqc.org and get all the information there. Uh, let's give all the groups a hand tonight. Now, most of all, let's give Jesus praise. He's the one who's worthy. Amen. I encourage you to be in your church in the morning. If you don't have a home church, I would invite you to this church. They love the Lord with all their heart. But if you have a home church, be there. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teachers and everybody that has a part. Pray for the groups tomorrow. We'll be traveling. We'll be going tonight. We'll be leaving uh, in a few hours, headed to Texacana to do a homecoming service in the morning. And uh, so if you feel like going to Texacana, help us unload equipment at 7 o'clock in the morning. You'll be blessed by that. Uh, but uh, pray for each group as they travel and pray that revival breaks out in the United States of America. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. yeah don't be getting our thunder over here, brother. Uh, Amen. Well, let's bow. Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you. And we thank you for this weekend, Father. We thank you for the way you spoke to our hearts. And, Lord, how you just came in and, and sat with us tonight, Father. Lord, I thank you that you moved about and you touched us. God, and you convicted us of things in our life. Now, Father, we pray. There's one here that didn't move tonight. That, Lord, that you won't allow them to rest till they call somebody. And we want to know more about you. Father, we pray for each group, each ministry. Father, I pray that you be with them as they travel tonight. Lord, be with this church. Thank you for their hospitality and they show your love. Lord, now continue to use us. We long to see you, Father. But tarry because we have more work to do for you. Lord, again, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.